Over the past few years, Nintendo has been bringing more and more of its beloved franchises to the mobile platform. It's found great success in doing so with franchises such as Fire Emblem, Animal Crossing, and Mike Vick Simulator for kids. They managed to harness the essence of their game loops and bring them over to a less powerful platform that's not optimized for gaming. Very little of the game's DNA is lost in the transition though, and that aspect alone has always tended to impress me. So when I heard everyone's third favorite family ruining party game was coming over to a mobile platform, I wasn't even nervous. And after putting hours into the final ish product, this is still a mobile game y'all, I'm happy to say that the moment to moment gameplay is pretty solid. If you can ignore the unfortunate money grabs, this title will keep you entertained and pissed the hell off for months to come. Now with my other mobile reviews, I'm going to do the same thing, break it down pros, cons, and mixed results, but I also want to split it up in a different way. Because the main bulk of the game takes place either on the track or in the menu, uh, I want to talk about both of them separately. Because one is significantly better than the other and you know who you are, you piece of shit. Before I actually got to play Mario Kart Mobile, it asked me what kind of control I like. Now, I've only really played two Mario Kart games seriously. One was on the Wii and one was on the Wii U. I do not like motion controls with this game. I feel like they're too finicky and I've come to win, not have fun. So naturally I got rid of all the motion controls and all the assistance and I gotta say it, it took like three races to finally get used to it but once you get used to it it feels nice. Now I personally have not tried all the combination but it looks like there's plenty for everyone. You just gotta be patient. Um, it will take a while to get used to and it definitely feels super slippery especially when compared to other games if you're familiar with the franchise but once you get it it, it just clicks it's kind of hard to describe but keep practicing don't give up and make sure you hit that like button to support my dreams because this is hard work the best thing about the gameplay though is that it's still mario kart like in so many ways i don't feel like anything was really lost in the transition um you still get those literal last second upsets where you're in first place and then someone just swipes by you and you know takes that away from you but there's also still a lot of the rubber banding that goes on not so much with the speed i always felt like i was artificially slowed down on the console games whereas this one helps you with items but the thing about the items is other games kind of made you feel like a really squishy target if you were in front whereas this one does help you out as far as I've noticed, there are no starmen in this game, but it seems as though mushrooms and item frenzy frenzies have replaced those. It's kind of funny because the frenzy, when it first pops up, you think it's a starman, but it's not. It's just part of the tutorial. Calm down. Pro tip, if you are in first place and you're about to get slapped hard with a blue turtle shell, aka Azul Diablo, Make sure you hold on to your mushrooms. They can actually get you out of these situations now, and the horn isn't the only weapon that seems to work. This may be a bug, but take advantage of it for now. One thing I've noticed in this game that I haven't noticed in other games is the addition, or probably the bring back, I don't know this franchise too well, of slipstreaming. If it's exactly what it sounds like. Stay behind an opponent for a bit and you get a bit of a boost. It brings a new strategy to the game that I'm not used to, so it's, it's interesting that they added it, because now I'm not really in a rush to start off in the beginning. That initial boost is fun, but anyone who knows Mario Kart well enough knows that it really doesn't mean shit towards the end of the game. It's a little finicky because you're always going forward and you can't really break so you can't really prolong a slipstream longer than you can. But it's a nice strategy to get used to and I'm pretty sure people will be pulling off insane moves with this new technique shortly. One of the more surprising aspects of the game though are the graphics. It looks great and it actually runs very smoothly. I felt like I was running 60 frames per second except for when I was taking screenshots on my Pixel XL Generation 1. If you're not familiar, that's a pretty old phone. It's about 3 or 4 years old in phone years, so essentially it's Morgan Freeman. And maybe I'm tripping, but I feel like I might have noticed some motion blur too, which is not something you see very often in mobile games. Now, due to the transition to mobile, the game has been simplified, but not terribly so. Item boxes seem to respawn instantaneously, but you still kind of have to make an effort to get them. Characters don't really drive off the tracks anymore, but driving into a wall still doesn't help you win a race. So while Nintendo was giving with this transition, it wasn't too giving. It allowed the game to be fun and not have you fight against the controls in order to allow for the precision that you may or may not need. Real talk though, you might not need it. But like I said earlier, it's still Mario Kart, so pretty much all the things you like about Mario Kart are still here and if I were to go on about why Mario Kart's great this would turn into a completely different video so we got to move on to the cons oh the cons now just like in other Mario Kart games you unlock new cups by unlocking stars within the current Grand Prix uh, unlike other Mario Kart games though your position doesn't really have too much of an influence on how much stars you get there were quite a few times where I got first place and spanked the ever-loving crap out of my competition only be given four stars at the end of the race this sucks 
sucks because it's obviously done in order to keep the grind ongoing and to make matters worse you don't really know exactly the score you need beforehand if you're going on a race for the first time you don't know just how well you have to do in order to get all five stars you could do amazing and still end up one short to complicate matters even further stars are based on points and points are based on the gear you have uh, certain items based on their level can multiply the amount of points you get and that basically means you're going to have to go back and repeat some of these races with better gear even though your skill itself may or may not be improving now at launch you cannot play against other humans you're basically playing playing against bots based on humans. I can see this rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. While I personally don't mind it and it makes for some very casual racing moments, the unexpectedness of other human players kind of is taken away when you kind of know what's going to happen around the next turn. This is not to say that the bots implemented in Mario Kart are predictable, but they're less frantic and wild than other human characters. The odd thing, however, is despite bots being in every mode, you cannot pause this game. It would make sense during a live game, but I'm facing bots and everything's basically localized. Let me pause my damn game. Outside of that issue, though, I don't really have too many problems with the gameplay. Races are generally short. Right now, they seem limited to two laps with no way to extend it. But this may be a pro or a con depending on the individual playing. But for situations where I have a short wait, I don't really see this as a problem. But for situations where my wait may be longer than expected, such as when you make an appointment with any doctor ever, this might be problematic given the fact that the rounds aren't really deep enough to get into. It's just kind of that one lap and then the makeup lap and then you're done. So yeah, overall, the gameplay of of Mario Kart Mobile is solid as all hell. If you enjoyed this review, go ahead and click the the like and subscribe button. And I, I'm not done. I know I'm not done. God damn it. Okay, so outside of the race, Mario Kart Mobile is a bitch. But look, I got a I got a standard to set here. So let's go ahead and start with the pros real quick. When you're on your star grind trying to unlock subsequent cups, the UI does make it pretty easy to find where you may be able to wiggle out an extra star or two. Also, ranking up through the cups does reward you with gifts that seems to change every few weeks, but I have yet to see one of these changes. But it's nice to know that things will be fresh in the long run. Unfortunately, that's it. That's that's all the good stuff I got to say about everything outside of the gameplay of Mario Kart. All of the other decisions that supplement the gameplay are weird to me for starters you need five stars in order to basically finish a track within a cup but before going into a track it doesn't show you just how many stars you need because the stars you get on this game are based less so on position and more so on points just it's it's weird like you're more pressured to pull off tricks during a race instead of focusing on the race and they don't tell you anywhere except for the end of the race just how many points you need to get five stars so you could be whipping all kinds of ass and pulling off these vin diesel-esque drifts but you're still not going to get those five stars. As I've said in other reviews, I'm a very optimal gamer. Let me know what the target is so I can slap that bitch. Instead, it hides the target from me and slaps me with it at the end of a race for not reaching it. Not cool, Nintendo. Not cool. As you progress through the game, challenges do get unlocked, but some of them kind of hurt because you know you've already done them, but you weren't rewarded for it. Okay, I'm going to have to say screw my template and go ahead into the mix part because there's a major negative thing I want to talk about, but I kind of want to end the video with that. Coin Rush is a kind of fun way to buy coins. Instead of just giving you the coins into your account, you got to earn them. Kind of fun, but not for everyone. Star tickets are kind of interesting because not only are they used to progress you to the next cup, but they can also be used to give you an item mid-race. I, I don't think it's that useful mid-race, but to each their own. The selling rate for rupees right now seems a bit off. It costs $2 to get 3, but it costs 5 rupees in order to buy something from the store, so I don't understand that ratio entirely at all. And the gold pass is ridiculously priced, but it's not meant for peasants like myself. It's meant for the whales. And if you're unfamiliar with what a whale is, a whale is basically the rich people that keep free-to-play games running so the rest of us peasants can play it. They're those dudes you see on Clash of Clans that have everything maxed out and they're spending like 70 grand a month on the game. I shit you not. Now, I do have to point out that the Gold Pass does have a two-week free trial, which afterwards it does start taking money at your account, but I've opted to not go for the free trial. I'm not, I'm not into these tactics. Which leads me to my final point. What the hell happened, Nintendo? You guys were not this money hungry. The fact that 200cc mode is locked behind a paywall makes me wonder if Nintendo was even involved in this game in the first place. And I get that 200cc was locked behind paywalls in the other Mario Kart, but that paywall wasn't a $5 monthly subscription. You gotta be reasonable here, folks. This kind of hurt me because I've always loved Nintendo and 
low key, I've loved the fact that they never tried to keep up with anyone on the technology side. They just want to innovate what's already in existence. And when they started approaching DLC, they approached it with a light handed way that didn't make them seem like they were putting money before gaming. And I'm a realist capitalist. I understand that these companies need to make money in order to keep giving us that good shit. And boy, do I love that good shit. But I don't expect it from Nintendo. You're better than this. So I feel like the gameplay side of this game was definitely designed by Mario and the store was probably designed by Bowser. There's no way of knowing if Nintendo has any plans to fix these issues with this store but here's hoping they do because other than the store this game is quite a remarkable feat and everyone should try it if you are a fan of the franchise. It's free to play, it's easy to pick up and put down and you can play it with one hand so if you like to touch yourself this is the game for you. But that about wraps it up for this video, thank you for somehow making it all the way to the end. If you can hear the sound of my voice and you have not clicked that like button go ahead and do that the youtube algorithm is hungry and it feeds off those likes also go ahead and click that subscribe button if you're a fan of my mildly infuriating speech impediment thanks again for watching and i hope every item box you get is a mega mushroom happy gaming